Hello and welcome to the Cinematic Attic YouTube channel. I'm Mike. How you doing? This is a place where we celebrate all films, all genres, and all forms of physical media. So if you're cool with that, welcome. So this time around, another pretty big haul. Uh, mostly from Kino Lorber. Their Winter Wonderland sale, their Wild Supplies Last sale and other things I throw in just because I wanted to buy them. <laughs> um, yeah, so instead of going crazy with the Ving Vinegar Syndrome Black Friday sale, I kind of went crazy this year with uh, Kino. So let's get into what I picked up. Uh, speaking of Vinegar Syndrome and what I did get from the Black Friday sale, uh, of course, could not pass this up, the uh, Lost Picture Show 10 film set uh, films that were in some way shape or form thought lost that vinegar syndrome has rescued preserved and released on blu-ray just for us and uh, quite a nice package so 10 films lost picture show vinegar syndrome Uh, I picked up Fatal Games. Uh, it's an 80s slasher, so of course I had to get it. Uh, I have seen this, but never owned it, so happy to get this from Vinegar Syndrome. Also picked up The Black Room. And I got this specifically because I knew I needed to upgrade it. Here's my old cut box VHS. I may even have it on a full screen DVD. I'd have to double check that, but it's not important because now I have Blu-ray. Um, another new release from Vinegar Syndrome from their new Degausser label, Redneck Zombies. This is uh, Vinegar Syndrome's new sub-label where they can put out films that were not shot on actual film. And then uh, as far as uh, other uh, older catalog items that I picked up during the sale, I only got three. Um, and none of these are really that old. Um, I, I had my eye on this, the three films of uh, Carlos Enrique Tabauda, Mexican Gothic. You get um, these three films, Rapina, Darker Than Night, Poison for the Fairies. Um, get a nice nice booklet there too but yeah I uh, wanted to grab that also the Devonsville Terror I uh, for some reason had thought I already owned this but um, never did nor have I ever seen it so I've heard some good things so I'm uh, curious to check this out and the last one um, Curse of the Blue Lights um, <laughs> makes it sound like some kind of uh, Kmart horror movie, but <laughs> um, people of a certain age will get that. But uh, no, I've seen this, um, it's been quite a while. I watched a terrible, terrible print on YouTube, um, so it's nice to uh, get a proper Blu-ray of this. Uh, for Christmas because that happened. <laughs> I did get a couple things uh, from Arrow. The Bloodthirsty Trilogy. This is one that uh, I, I'd seen these films for the first time I believe last year and enjoyed them and I wanted to get this release um, so I threw it in my uh, Amazon wish list and was lucky enough to get it. So this has um, Vampire Doll, Lake of Dracula and Evil of Dracula. 70s Japanese uh, vampire films and another one to check off my list of Barbara Stanwyck films especially those available from Warner Archive Cry, Cry Wolf uh, with Errol Flynn so I've got that on DVD and I also got a book for Christmas that I'll show you later um, I realized that I had never picked this up from Severin and I needed to upgrade a VHS, so I got uh, The Boys Next Door. 
which will upgrade this VHS. Speaking of Severin, um, <laughs> their release of the last horror film I wanted to get, but just too expensive. So, um, in order to upgrade to VHS, I have it under that title on a terrible cut box and the alternate title of Fanatic. In order to upgrade these, I just went ahead and got the 88 Films Blu-ray and called it a day. I'm fine with this. No big deal. Uh, from Blue Underground, I realized um, there's a title in their catalog that I had never grabbed to upgrade VHS, and that is this one. MVD had a sale on Synapse and its related impulse line. Um, I just grabbed three items mainly to upgrade VHS. So I got Invasion USA. No, not that Invasion USA. No Chuck Norris here. Um, that would be interesting to add him to this movie. Um, that upgrades this VHS. The Deadly Spawn which upgrades this VHS. And um, they had this really cheap on the Blu-ray. I wanted to try it. I've read about it. Flower and Snake from their Impulse line. And the final item before all the Kino goodness from Arrow, their latest Spaghetti Western collection, Savage Guns. Um, with this, you get a book, a poster, and these four films. The Four of the Apocalypse, which uh, actually kind of upgrades a uh, DVD for me. The DVD I have, the widescreen is questionable. <laughs> it seems like a kind of fake widescreen. So this is kind of an upgrade for that. Also, uh, Wrath of the Wind... El Puro, and I want him dead. <laughs> That's fun to say. Anyway, so I grabbed that set from Arrow. And then Kino. So for the uh, Kino sale, I ended up ordering 100 items. <laughs> I did a one uh, one order of 36 items. I went back and did a couple other smaller orders that together equaled like 24 items. And then I went back and did another final order for 40 more items because I'm crazy. <laughs> um, I do have to tell you a story, though. My experience in getting these packages from Kino Lorber was one of the strangest and... Uh, kind of frustrating um, experiences I've ever had getting uh, movies shipped to my house. Not that they didn't arrive, they certainly did, and uh, no real problem with the amount of time, it's how they arrived. So the two smaller packages from the two smaller orders arrived just fine. The, um, the final big order of 40 arrived just fine. But in, in the midst of all that, the first order of 36 items, well, let's just say one day I checked my phone and I had 36 emails because they sent me 36 tracking numbers, which logic dictates means you're going to get 36 packages. <laughs> sure enough. I came home one day and found eight little boxes, each containing one Blu-ray or DVD. Each, I, I just said each, didn't I? Yes, each with one item. The uh, next day, 
there were uh, all the rest except one. And I'll put pictures up here to show you uh, what they looked like in front of my door. And then there was one, uh, just one of these packages, little packages containing one Blu-ray, that even though it was shipped with the rest, it did not arrive within that same two-day span. It somehow found itself floating around Colorado and took an extra week, which, you know, mail. Okay, fine. <laughs> but why one order of 36 items, why would they send that in 36 little boxes? I don't know if it was someone's first day on the job or if they ran out of big boxes and said, hey, let's do this stupid thing. But it was kind of frustrating. Um, I mean, I'm happy I got them. I'm not really complaining. I didn't email the company, although I was tempted. But, um, you know, I, I guess I got the experience of opening 36 Christmas packages to get 36 movies. Uh, but then, of course, I have 36 boxes of debris to deal with. But, okay. Never have seen that happen. If anyone else has seen that happen, let me know. Because that was nuts. Anyway, here's what I got from the sale. Again, 100 items. I'm going to start with this the stuff that's not um, Kino Lorber Studio Classics proper. Uh, so, this first few are from their partnership with Code Red. And I, I have to say right off the bat, one of the reasons I got 100 items was... Um, I was going through everything that was on sale and the Winter Wonderland sale and the While Supplies Last sale and even other spots on the website trying to upgrade VHS. So there's a ton of VHS upgrading in here because I'm still trying to do that. But not at first. So from Code Red, I got The Fifth Floor, which is a movie I thought I already owned. This cover looked familiar. I thought, it had, I th I thought I had it in my collection as a VHS, but no. Um, see Robert England in there. So, pick that up. Um, start stacking these somewhere. Some Lamberto Bava with Blast Fighter. Never seen that, so that looks fun. And some Lindsay Iron Master. Some prehistoric fun. And from uh, Fernando de Leo, The Violent Breed. This last one, um, through Code Red, Mercenary Fighters, I got to upgrade a full screen DVD that I have through one of those old Video Asia sets. So happy to upgrade that. Peter Fonda, Reb Brown. <laughs> yeah. Then some of their uh, releases, actually two, um, through Scorpion, or from Scorpion. King of the Mountain, this one, um, I had seen the trailer before, looked interesting. Uh, Dennis Hopper, Harry Hamlin, and Deborah Van Valkenburg from The Warriors. So, yeah, that sold me. Wanted to give this one a try. And this one... <laughs> Golden Girl, which looks a lot like a um, TV movie, which is great. That would be a reason for me to get it. But it looks simply like some kind of, a, you know, um, inspirational sports movie. But apparently there are aspects of science fiction in this. So I'm intrigued. <laughs> so had to get that. Then a couple from their genre on numbered series. Uh, I got this one because it upgrades a full screen DVD on, I believe, another Video Asia set. So I got that just to get a um, proper looking version of the movie. And then I also picked up this one, the Escapees, because this one I'd seen before. Um, it was actually, I believe, on Netflix streaming a long time ago, back when they used to actually have 
an interesting selection <laughs> before you know everything was um not older than five years <laughs> but anyway the escapees then some items that are just regular kino releases boonie wells the milky way saw this a long time ago but it will upgrade vhs Camille Claudel also saw this a long time ago, but it will upgrade this VHS. Colonel Reddle <laughs> have not seen this one, but it will upgrade VHS. And uh, one uh, actual Kino DVD, Bird of Paradise. Um, this one upgrades this odd VHS, which was apparently, I guess one of those, um, uh, or from one of those companies where you could subscribe to movies that they would send you or something. Cause they, you know, I, there's several companies that would just send you a generic sleeve, but you know, the movie would be, um, in there labeled correctly. Anyway, upgrades this. Then I got two of the new Kino Cult titles. Uh, Alien Outlaw and The Dark Power. Both uh, from Phil Smoot. I got these because um, they sounded interesting, first of all. But they also both have Lash LaRue, who was an old B-Western cowboy. And uh, if you've been following my videos, you know I'm totally all in on uh, watching uh, B-Westerns and learning about them. Um, but this one in particular also has uh, a special appearance by Sunset Carson, another B-Cowboy. And it, it is described, this movie is described as both a clever send-up of the 1950s rubber suit monster genre and a loving homage to the 1940s B-Western. So that, that sold it. So grabbed both of those titles. Now for the uh, Kino Lorber Studio Classics. Got a lot. And I had to get, or I got some of them on DVD. Just a few. Then most of them, most of them are on Blu-ray. But starting with the DVDs. Picked up Endless Night based on an Agatha Christie novel. I have seen this. Um, but it will upgrade this VHS. I got a bunch of Bronson, including Farewell Friend. This one upgrades a VHS, which I have under an alternate title. Um, I've seen this. It's not one of my favorite Bronsons, but uh, it's Bronson nonetheless. The Gray Fox. Heard a lot of good things about this but it does upgrade a VHS. The Ipcrest file, which does uh, upgrade a, a VHS for me, but it's uh, I think it's um, an Anchor Bay clamshell, and I'm going to keep it uh, for now. Um, but yeah, I wanted to get it on disc, so the Ipcrest file, Michael Caine. Uh, the Light at the Edge of the World with Kirk Douglas and Yul Brynner. Saw this a long time ago, don't remember it don't remember much about it, but it does upgrade this VHS. Classic, Sydney Portier, Lily, Lilies of the Field. Again, upgrading a VHS. Um fun fact, there was a sequel to this movie made for television. I think uh I think it was Billy D Williams who played uh, Sydney's part in the TV sequel. Uh, sequel, not as good, and it does kind of replay a lot of scenes in a slightly different way. So there are, are times when it feels like a remake, but it is a sequel. Um, and I don't remember the title, but um, it would have been fun if it was a bonus feature on here, but oh well. Uh, Lilies of the Field. Uh, I got some early John Ford, including this one. Straight shooting 
from 1917. Um, I think, yeah, first feature by John Ford. And he used the name Jack Ford. <laughs> but yeah, early silent film from John Ford right here. Now breaking into Blu-rays with the other John Fords. Got this one. This one's from 1918. So one year later. And then Three Bad Men, 1926. So another silent film. This one with George O'Brien, who would later become B Cowboy. In the sound era, I should say. All right. Hard to hold. Rick Springfield upgrading VHS. Tank with James Garner upgrading this VHS. Executioner's Song, a TV miniseries with Tommy Lee Jones. Um, it's kind of cool. They put two different versions of the movie on here, the director's cut and the original version. I will watch the original version because it is longer, but you get one on it, one per disc, uh, but it will upgrade VHS. Here's a, an old science fiction film from 1954 that I remember renting on VHS from the video store back in the day. Um, I saw it in the sale and just had to grab it. Gog. <laughs> uh, yes, Robots on the Loose. Jungle Fever upgrading VHS. The Bounty, but not the quicker picker upper. A uh, 1984 telling of the mutiny on the bounty tale with Mel Gibson, Anthony Hopkins. Um, I enjoy any kind of movie like this. You know, the old sailing ships, um, especially if there's some kind of uh, mutiny tension. I love those kind of films, but this will upgrade, upgrade this VHS. Making Mr. Right. Again, upgrading a VHS that I've had in my collection a long time. Some Bronson with the Valdez Horses, also known as Chino. Some Dolph, the Minion. I'm amazed I haven't seen this one yet, so I'm actually kind of eager to check this out. Because even if it's not good, it'll be fun, and that's all that matters. I don't know, but uh, we'll see. And it will upgrade VHS. That was for Heroes. Upgrading a VHS. My Bodyguard. Um, I've heard a lot of things about this, especially on the Pure Cinema podcast. Um, it's one I've never seen from 1980. Uh, salt was in the sale, so I thought I'd give it a try. It's a gift. W.C. Fields upgrading a VHS. I, the jury. This one upgrades a VHS. Amazon Women on the Moon to upgrade this VHS. Ace High upgrades this VHS. <laughs> the Day of the Dolphin. George C. Scott Upgrades this VHS. I got this one just because it looked interesting. It's a Clint Eastwood picture, but um, uh, 
uh, as a director. Breezy, William Holden, K. Lenz. Sounded interesting. Slayground. Upgrades VHS. House of the Seven Gables. Again, upgrading a VHS. Some Vincent Price. Hustle, Burt Reynolds. Upgrading a VHS that is totally falling apart. <laughs> the Favor. VHS upgrade. Eyes of Laura Mars. Upgrading VHS. American Ninja 2. Some Dudikoff. Fun, fun series. Upgrading this VHS. The yes, Asfix, actually upgrading an old Transglobal VHS. Robber's Roost, 1955 film with George Montgomery. Um, I did grab some westerns just to grab some westerns because I'm all into westerns right now. Um, I've, I've. Um, started to have a steady diet of westerns and i don't think that's going to change so grabbed uh some westerns from the sale including joe kid with eastwood but this one will upgrade a vhs the experts upgrading a vhs These three I picked up because they were all three there, and I said, why not? Manuel, part two, and the third one. And I had, I would have sworn that I'd seen at least the first one, but no, I've actually seen the fourth one, and uh, at least one other from further down the line. But yeah, so adding those to my collection. Got the two Doctor Who films, Doctor Who and the Daleks, and the Daleks Invasion Earth 2150 AD, and this one will actually upgrade VHS. By the way, these also both have the Dalek Mania documentary on them, which I have seen. The Doctor. Upgrade. This one, um, actually a newer title, or newer release, I should say. 1986 is The Best of Times, Robin Williams, uh, Kurt Russell, fun movie. Um, upgrading this old cut box VHS. Cabo Blanco. <laughs> Some more Bronson. This one I thought I had already upgraded, but I hadn't. So it uh, uh, gets rid of this old media VHS that's pretty faded. Um, I've had this for a long time. So upgrading that. Up the Creek. Upgrade. Joe Pesci, Public Eye, another VHS that I'm getting rid of that I've had a long time. Uh, Vera Cruz, Burt Lancaster, Gary Cooper, Super Duper, upgrading a VHS. <laughs> the Jetsons. 
movie. I want to say I saw this in the theater, but I can't quite remember. I think I did. But I, the, the thing that um, I remember most is that Tiffany, the 80s singer Tiffany, did the voice for Judy Jetson. And at the time, in 1990, that, uh, that was cool for me. <laughs> so anyway. But ultimately it upgrades VHS. Some Jimmy Stewart Western action, Broken Arrow. Upgrade. Blame it on the bellboy. Upgrade. The Oxbow Incident, which um, I actually just got on um, DVD from the Fox Studio Classics line, which I'm trying to complete now. Um, I ordered that. Uh, no, I ordered this before I ordered that. Um, or they crossed paths or something. I didn't realize I didn't need to order both because, well, I mean, other than getting this on Blu-ray, which, of course, you know, most people prefer, <laughs> it does have all the same special features. So that basically just automatically upgraded a DVD I just bought. <laughs> but anyway, it, it um, it's fine because, um, like I said, I'm trying to complete the Fox Studio Classics collection, which um, has 40 plus one unnumbered 41 um, titles. I'm most of the way there. Anyway, Oxbow Incident. Uh, the Magic Sword, which I got uh, to upgrade a full screen DVD actually. With, uh, some Basil Rathbone. Backlash, a western with Richard Widmark, which I had seen um, a few years ago. So, grabbed that on disc. Uh, a couple of films here that I had watched on an old MGM uh, Midnight Movies double feature disc, I believe, but never owned. The Earth Dies Screaming. And Chosen Survivors, both of those in the sale. As well as a... Um, Bing Crosby, Bob Hope Road movie that I've seen but never owned, and I do own several of them, uh, Road to Rio. Touch of Evil. And this has three versions of the film, which is awesome. You get uh, three versions and a bunch of special features. Um, and of course this will upgrade this VHS then. Untamed Heart. Another upgrade. Under Capricorn, a uh, Hitchcock film that I actually haven't seen yet, but it does upgrade VHS. Man's Favorite Sport from Rock Hudson. I got a number of Rock Hudson films, I believe, uh, but it upgrades this. Got a few Bob Hope films, too. Um, my favorite, Brunette, um, which upgrades a VHS that I've had probably since my original collection started, <laughs> this, this old thing. So, um, yeah, upgrading that. Walter Matthau, Bruce Dern, The Laughing Policeman. Upgrades this old key video VHS. In the last stack here, Lemon Drop Kid, more Bob Hope. Upgrade. Lord Love a Duck. <laughs> Upgrade. Enter the Ninja. And that will upgrade this old uh, MGM. VHS. Uh, 
probably the newest film in this whole batch, and it's from 2000, The Crew, which I got to upgrade this. The Whistleblower. Upgrade. Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. Again, upgrade. Thunder Bay. Jimmy Stewart. Upgrade. Taking care of business. Upgrade. So proudly we hail. Um, Claudette Colbert, Paulette Goddard, Veronica Lake. You sold me with Veronica Lake. So, upgrade. More Bob Hope. Son of Paleface. Upgrade. Strange Bedfellows. Upgrade. There's some Rock Hudson again. Melanie Griffith, A Stranger Among Us. Upgrade. Ordeal of Innocence. Another, uh, I believe, based on Agatha Christie? Yeah. Donald Sutherland. And this is actually the last one that is an upgrade. The rest are not. So in the home stretch here. Desert Fury. Western here. Another Burt Lancaster. Got some a few of his films in this haul. Another Western, Horizons West. Again, Rock Hudson with Robert Ryan. Julie Adams. This one looked interesting. Um, don't know anything about it, but it's from 1934. So I, I've also, in, in, in addition to being obsessed with uh, watching old westerns, I've just really gotten into 1930s films. So wanted to check out Double Door. Another western. Border River. I just watched uh, Joel McRae in uh, Ride the High Country with Randolph Scott as I'm watching some Randolph Scott films. And uh, I uh, really wanted to check out more of Joel's westerns. So here we are. Some film noir. Pool of London. How Ashby film. The Landlord. Peter Fonda, Jerry Reed, Highball, and a film that I thought I already owned, but apparently do not. What looks like a strange little movie, Home Bodies. Secret Admirer. And the final one. <laughs> Item number 100 from the Kino Lorber sales, John Frankenheimer's The Challenge. And it indeed has been a challenge <laughs> to go through all of these films, but I loved it. So anyway, there you go. That's all the uh, madness that I <laughs> ordered uh, worth spotlighting. Here's everything else I picked up. From eBay, a trio of Bill Elliott Westerns. Got this from eBay. It's one of the Fox Studio Classics editions um, of this movie that I already have. So I wanted to go ahead and get this edition of it. 
because I've decided that um, over the next month or two, I will complete this series. Two more Studio Classic Discs from eBay and this Arrow release from Amazon. Got these two items from eBay. This is the complete Hopalong Cassidy TV series, 52 episodes. And Daddy Long Legs will upgrade this VHS. Got some DVDs from eBay, including this Fox Studio Classics, number 13. And these will all upgrade VHS. From eBay, another Fox Studio Classics with the River's Edge. Um, this one, number 40, is the last in the series, but not the last one that I need to get. So, more to come. Got this DVD to upgrade this VHS. Three from Goodwill, and this one will upgrade a VHS. Got this DVD to upgrade this VHS. So for this episode's Pantheon segment, I do have two titles to show you um, briefly. But then, of course, later in the episode is my 10 favorite watches of 2023, and all 10 of those will also be inducted into the Pantheon. So this time around, you're actually getting 12. Awesome, huh? Anyway, <laughs> uh, starting out with one that I kind of showed in a way, because last time I talked about Kidnapped Coed on this Blu-ray from Friedrich Friedel, uh, his 1976 film. And at the time, Axe, with um, some uh, alternate titles other than Axe, you'll, you'll find this under. Uh, at the time, it was not in the Pantheon, but over time... The more I thought about this movie, even though this one um, caught my attention as being really cool and clever right off the bat, this one kind of had to sit with me for a while, and uh, it is now in the Pantheon, and it is from 1975. It is about some guys who pretty much do a little home invasion, um, some killers on the run, Hold a young woman and her invalid grandfather hostage in an isolated farmhouse, which in and of itself is scary. Um, but um, she, of course, uh, fights back against them. It, it's it's a it's an atmospheric film. It has some slow um, portions, and a lot of that I think was just to get a longer running time because it only came out to be sixty seven minutes. But there's something about that, something about the atmosphere of it that I really enjoy. And it's 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 almost like it's happening in some kind of slightly off reality, which I also enjoy. Um, and as I think I said before, there is a, a supercut, if you will, of these two movies edited together to make one movie on this Blu-ray. Um, because they do share a common actor. And uh, it's it's interesting, but I have to say, uh, uh, Frederick Friedel. Um, these are the only two films he did in the seventies. I think he, he I think he's tried to do some later. I'm not sure um, the level of success he's had, but these two, at this point now, are both classics to me, in my pantheon favorite films. So Axe, this time around. The second one is a movie from last year, 2022, which um, did not make my Pantheon then, but upon, again, uh, letting it sink in and then actually watching it again uh, to, show, to show someone else, uh, I just love this movie. So, um, I am inducting into the Pantheon <laughs> Prey. 
something about this movie, um, I would say it will appeal to people who aren't really into Predator films. Um, something about this girl's story, the drama of her um, trying to prove herself, uh, the setting, the time period, all the stuff that um, makes this what it is really appeals to me. Um, and it's kind of funny because it's it's not the kind of thing that I would automatically say, yeah, that always appeals to me. But in this one, it does. Um, there's something about her character arc uh, that I just really enjoy. And the, uh, the scenes of her trying to um, fight back against a predator are great. So, um, really enjoyed this one. And uh, so I wanted to make sure it got inducted. This is my... 4K, and again, uh, so glad, I mentioned this when I when I got it, so glad that um, they decided to put this out on physical, me physical media because it was a, uh, originally just a Hulu streaming film. But yeah, uh, pray. Okay, so it's time to talk about my 10 favorite first-time watches in the year 2023. And these 10 films will, of course, as usual, all be inducted into the Pantheon, my favorite movies of all time. But yes, the ten, my 10 favorite first-time watches. 2023, the first one was... The Tarnished Angels. So Douglas Sirk does it again. <laughs> Douglas Sirk, um, the director of one of my all-time favorite movies, All That Heaven Allows, as well as others that I love, like Magnificent Obsession. I watched this film because he directed it. It Also because it reunites the cast of Written on the Wind, Rock Hudson, Robert Stack, Dorothy Malone. In a uh, entirely different story, this one based on a uh, novel by William Faulkner, uh, concerns a um, stunt pilot, played by Robert Stack, and his wife, played by Dorothy Malone, and a reporter, played by Rock Hudson, who kind of gets in the middle of those two and causes um, problems. So you have all this um, melodrama. And uh, the, the thing that really struck me, besides um, the story and the, and the drama and the tension of it all, was the way that the um, story was crafted. The way it um, was layered with symbols, uh, foreshadowing, all sorts of things that just um, showed a very finely crafted story. Also, of course, technically um, uh, well directed, but you just you just got caught up in this movie. You got caught up in watching all the stuff that happened, not only with the characters but around the characters that helped tell the story, and uh, it also made me um, take notice of Dorothy Malone. Uh, for the first time, I've I have of course seen her in other things, but this is the first time I really said, "Hey, I um, I think I want to seek out other things that she has done." But yeah, this uh, this movie just surprised me. I mean, I was expecting a, a decent movie, being Williams uh, William Douglas Sirk, but um, just um, an amazing piece of work. Uh, so Douglas Sirk does it again. Tarnished Angels. This is from 1957. And this is the Kino Lorber Blu-ray. Next up, a 1985 film. Uh, the DVD cover is nothing special. <laughs> but the movie is Fortress. Starring Rachel Ward as a teacher in a small one-room schoolhouse in the Australian outback. Uh, which one day is, um, 
besieged by a bunch of gunmen with masks who kidnap the teacher and the children and take them out into the, the middle of nowhere. Their uh, objective is to hold them for ransom. What the gunmen don't bargain on is um, just how much Rachel Ward and her kids will try to escape, try to resist, try to fight back. And it's just a fantastic um, piece of work. Um, lots of suspense. Lots of people in peril and how will they uh, get out of this one kind of stuff. And an ending that is, um, well, the characters uh, have, have had an arc. <laughs> we'll just put it that way. Uh, fantastic film. Um, I, I first watched this and, well, owned this on VHS, and I didn't think there was actually um, a copy on disc that was um, at least in widescreen until I discovered this existed and ordered it right away on HBO Video. It is indeed widescreen. So, Fortress needs a Blu-ray, though, for uh, those folks who only collect Blu-ray, so they can check it out, too. This is a fantastic film. Next up, from 1984, a low-budget film called Disconnected. This is by the director of Psychos in Love, uh, Gorman Bouchard. This one is, uh, like I said, low budget, so a lot of the um, technical aspects are, um, you know, subpar. But it is amazing what uh, the director is able to do with what he has to work with. And, of course, I'm someone who does not ever complain about low budget uh, technical subparness. <laughs> Sometimes I love that stuff. But what he's able to craft with this film is um, unique. So, um, this is another movie I put in not, not really expecting a whole lot. And uh, by the time it was over, I, I it stuck with me. And it, it, um, it was a movie I was thinking about for a few days afterwards because of just how it left me feeling. Uh, this is kind of like two movies in one. The first half of the movie is uh, kind of a slasher movie. You know, you have a um, uh, female lead character. You have a, a guy uh, that she's interested in. Is he a killer? Someone's killing people around town. And you have that whole story that, that happens. But then the movie keeps going. Throughout the movie, the main character, she's uh, been... Uh, troubled by these strange phone calls that um, leave, as it says here, loud and ghastly echo through the receiver. And the second half of the movie is how that kind of drives her, uh, well, it's like a descent into madness, what these phone calls do to her. I could see where some people would find it really uh, grating and... Um, maybe uh, something that would get on their nerves. For me, it was more um, hypnotic, and the further the further it went, the more uncomfortable and strange it got. This is also a movie in which the ending <laughs> is one of those endings where if you get it, it's a really interesting, uh, unique way to tie it back to the beginning so there's a clue <laughs> um, that I really thought added an, a, a different level of strangeness to it which I really enjoyed so this just made an impression it stuck with me and um, I don't know it just feels like a movie that you could um, talk about and uh, the the uh, slasher aspect of it uh, was really done in a clever way there's a lot of things that made me laugh, made me um, surprised at the uh, uh, creativity. So, disconnected. Fun movie. Vinegar Syndrome release. Um, yeah. Next up from, uh, let's see, 1980. A movie that, as far as I know, is not available on a legitimate um, disc. 
So I have the VHS, Night of the Juggler. I've heard people talk about this and how much they enjoyed it. Uh, and I happen to have this VHS in my collection. I picked it up at an antique mall at some point in my life. And uh, so I checked it out. And it is indeed a film that deserves um, to be out there, to, to deserves to be on Blu-ray, deserves to be rediscovered by um, people who don't know about it. Stars James Brolin as a man whose daughter is kidnapped by this crazy person. The crazy person thinks his daughter is the daughter of some wealthy person. He gets them mixed up. And uh, the whole movie is James Brolin chasing after this guy, trying to find this guy, um, but, but literally often chasing this guy through the city of New York uh, just to get his daughter back. And so it's, it's tense, it's suspenseful. Um, you know, you, <laughs> you feel his frustration every time he falls short of catching the guy. Um, and another thing I loved about it is that it uses the um, New York landscape of the time effectively. And you see uh, a lot of New York's, as it says here, seamy streets decaying burned out Bronx tenements. So the kind of things you would have seen in some of the movies at this time, including the movie Tenement, uh, you see here. So it does fit very nicely into that family of films that I related to the Warriors. So this may come up later in uh, a revision, an update of my Warriors Cinematic Universe list. Just saying. But uh, yeah, this, this was um, exciting from start to finish. A real gem and uh, if you can find this to watch somewhere there are um, DVDs bootleg DVDs but you're really just gonna get a full screen copy that's pretty much the same as this uh, from what I know um, not that I know it all I could be wrong but um, uh, from what I found this is the only way to really legitimately get a copy but Night of the Juggler 1980 great film Next up, back to the low-budget end of things, to a movie that was shot on Super 8 and edited on tape, we have The Black Crystal, and that is released here on Blu-ray from Agfa. Uh, I watched this movie not really expecting anything special, uh, but what I ended up watching and experiencing was a, a film that felt like it took place and some, uh, <laughs> some earth that wasn't quite like ours, uh, you know, um, as it says here, a action horror hallucination filmed in the backwoods of Tucson, Arizona. Um, it was fun to get lost in the, in the, the, the feeling of the world of this. Um, uh, but it, it's like it says, an action, uh, horror film. You have a guy who gets mixed up in... Um, these people after the Black Crystal, there's a, a, a satanic cult group. Um, there's a woman who is kind of like a witch um, that he gets mixed up with, falls in love with. <laughs> but um, the story just goes in interesting, strange places, and none of the characters are safe. It's one of those movies where you don't know if the character you're looking at is going to survive to the next scene. You know, um, it's not predictable that way. And you just don't know what's going to happen. And, <laughs> and I kind of really enjoyed it. I really kind of wish I could go back to this world and, and watch um, something else. <laughs> but uh, yeah, The Black Crystal, 19, actually it says here 1991. Um, so conflicting sources. But uh, yeah, I'm directed by Mike Conway. And you can get this from, from uh, Agfa, it's a Vinegar Syndrome partner label. Very strange, interesting, and enthralling little movie. Next, we're going to Sci-Fi Channel Movie Land with one of the most fun times I've had with a monster movie in recent memory. Wyvern, from 2009. Again, Sci-Fi Channel Movie. 
where you have a small Alaskan town attacked by this creature. And the townsfolk have to survive and possibly kill it if they can. This is a movie that is just infectious fun. Um, it's kind of what you're looking for if you just want a good time with a monster movie where, you know, the monster can be picking off characters left and right. You don't know who's going to survive. Um, has a sense of humor, which is always great. Uh, the thing that really just sold me, the thing that made me say, yep, okay, I'm on board. I love this movie. It takes place in this small, quirky little Alaskan town. And the first thing I thought of was the TV show Northern Exposure. If you've ever seen that show, um, it is the epitome of <laughs> um, a small town filled with quirky people. And it happens to be a small town in Alaska. So, first thing I thought of. And then, lo and behold, this movie actually features two cast members from Northern Exposure. Barry Corbin and Elaine Miles, I think it is. Barry Corbin and Northern Exposure... Ex Bozier played the, um, I guess, I think it was a retired astronaut or something. Uh, and Elaine played the main character doctor's receptionist. And she was always a source of um, quiet, reserved comedy. <laughs> and in, But in here she plays a member of the police force. So it was really fun to see her in a role that I was not used to. But yeah, this this is just a good time. So if you're looking for a monster movie that's a good time, why Vern? Why not? <laughs> okay, so the last four films are all westerns. As I say every year, uh, the year that just passed, uh, usually, well, always, really, features a moment in which I find a new rabbit, rabbit hole of film to jump into and go crazy with and watch a lot of. And this year, 2023, was the year of the Western for me. I always liked Westerns. This year I became obsessed with them. <laughs> um, especially thanks to the B-Westerns that I got uh, um, obsessed with watching and um, you know learning about all the, the B-Cowboy heroes and all the films that they did and, and, and going down the rabbit hole of each of those stars and their films. Um, I'm planning to do quite a bit more watching of those in uh, 2024, including all the films of Hopalong Cassidy and so on and so forth. So yeah, there are some Westerns on this list because I watched a lot of them. September um, was the month in which I uh, decided to have a themed Western watching month and that's where all this blew up. Um, I planned to watch as many Westerns in September as I could, and I ended up watching 43. And then, uh, <laughs> the rest of the year I just couldn't stop watching Westerns, and right now they are indeed a regular part of my movie-watching diet, and I love it. So, kind of making a bridge from the last movie, being a horror kind of movie, to this first Western... Curse of the Undead from 1959. I think I mentioned this in, in a video or two before when I got this. Um, I first watched this in October for the month of... Well, for the Halloween month as a horror movie because um, this does have horror elements, obviously. But what I did not realize is that this movie, as it says on the back, is the first film to mix cowboys and vampires. And I might add... To do it with a straight face. To do it seriously. To play it even. Um, it's a nice even mixture of western and uh, vampire movie. Horror movie. You have the familiar western plot of, you know, there's um, uh, a rancher who's trying to steal land or steal water or do something like that. And people want to stop him. And this gunslinger comes to town and... Um, uh, he wants to be hired to take care of the problem. But what they don't know is this gunslinger is a vampire. <laughs> and uh, he becomes interested in the rancher Dolores. And uh, it's up to Preacher Dan 
to save the day. And will he? Well, um, that's what you'll see in this movie. The, uh, and when I watched this, the, the thing that just kind of blew my mind at the time was just how much of a Western it was, but yet it had vampires. You had a, you know, a cowboy character in a cowboy situation in a Western town, and but he was a vampire. It was just, um, strange for a movie from this time period. And like it says, it's the first to mix cowboys and vampires. Is that true? I, well, seems to be. But even if not, it's it was a really great time. The movie itself is not something that, on its own, would stand out. I mean, it's a perfectly good film, but the thing that really puts it over the edge is the mixture of the genres. So, if you've never seen this, uh, check it out. Especially if you're interested in any of any of the two genres. Uh, the title, a little generic, based on, or compared to, rather, what's in the movie. Um, <laughs> it doesn't really tell you what you're getting, other than the fact that there is an undead somebody. But yeah, fun film. Recommend it. This is the Kino Lorber Blu-ray. Next up, we're going to some Jimmy Stewart. And what is, I believe, considered a pretty classic Western. From 1939, yeah, Destry Rides Again, and I have this as part of the Jimmy Stewart Western Collection, uh, featuring uh, six Universal Westerns that Jimmy Stewart did. Um, but yeah, he plays a seemingly mild-mannered guy who comes to town his father had a quite the reputation of keeping order, um, and the townsfolk are having trouble keeping order, and they want him to be the sheriff and take over and be his father, be like his father was. Except this guy is a peaceable man who doesn't uh, carry guns. So he is then, of course, highly underestimated by everyone. And... Uh, he is joined in this movie by Marlena Dietrich, playing a saloon girl who um, shares some great scenes with Jimmy Stewart. But the thing that, about this movie is, the thing that makes this movie, the thing that makes you watch this movie with a grin on your face, <laughs> is Jimmy Stewart. His portrayal is just, he's just so cool and collected. And it's fun to watch him be underestimated and then show them that he shouldn't be. Um, it's a joy to watch. And this story, um, I, it's, it's been filmed... Um, I know I saw a version of it with Audie Murphy playing this character. Um, so I know it's been filmed more than this. Probably another time or two. But uh, this, this is a great rendition of the story. And uh, highly recommended. If you're a Western fan already, you, I'm sure you know this movie. But yeah, Destry Rides Again from 1939. Great, great movie. Next up, 1935. As I said, I watched a lot of B-Westerns. One of the things I did was I went through the entire catalog of all of John Wayne's uh, B-Westerns. And this is the one that stood out the most. The New Frontier. 1935. Only 55 minutes long, like I said. B-movie, B-western. Uh, John Wayne plays John Dawson, who is a character that everyone respects. Even the outlaws. Even the outlaws don't give him trouble. Um, matter of fact, at one point in the movie, when he... Uh, and, and there's a great scene where he's confronting these outlaws to get something done, and they listen to him. But later in the movie, when he's made a sheriff, he actually deputizes them to help him, and they agree. They fight on the side of the law because he asked them to. And that it was just such a great interplay, uh, in my mind. Problem, though, there's an even uh, nastier outlaw and his gang who don't care. <laughs> they don't know him, they don't care. They... Um, 
are terrorizing this town, and he needs to stop them. And the end of this movie, the um, the epic fight, is really an epic battle um, that includes like a nighttime, almost trench warfare kind of battle in this small town. The good guys versus the bad guys, and people getting shot on both sides. You don't know who's going to make it. And it looks it, it, it looks like they took <laughs> and turned this little town into a war zone. It, it was far and above what you would expect them to even try to do with a movie of this type on this kind of budget. It was really impressive. I um, just really enjoyed this one. So if you're looking to start somewhere with uh, John Wayne B. Westerns, maybe this one. Um... Just ignore the scene where he's supposedly singing, <laughs> because, yeah, just just ignore that part. Anyway, uh, <laughs> The New Frontier, 1935, this is an Olive DVD. Olive actually uh, put out, uh, I think, Olive, well, not Olive, Olive, <laughs> Olive, Olive, um, quite a number of his B-Westerns, uh, which I didn't know until I started digging into them. Um, so thank you, Olive, for doing that. Even though I don't think the company is around anymore. Last one. My last favorite watch of 2023 was a movie that really blew me away. It really surprised me. Really was not expecting this movie to give me anything other than just a, a fun little watch. And instead, it was... <laughs> The movie that I most probably in the year of 2023 sat there and, and just said out loud, wow. And that is a little film starring George O'Brien, another B-Western from 1939. On this collection, it's The Marshal of Mesa City. This is from Warner Archive. Um, also starring Virginia Hale. Directed by David Howard. Screenplay by Jack Late Jr. I am really intrigued to know if Jack Late Jr. wrote any other westerns because this was fantastic. Um, this just had a lot of things I did not expect. Um, the least of which is Virginia Hale's character being a uh, a woman uh, who stood up for herself and didn't take any crap, which was fun. Um, but the thing that really stood out there, uh, there were these outlaws that wanted George O'Brien's character taken out because he was representing the law in, in town. So these bad guys hired this gunman with a reputation from out of town to come take care of him. This young guy played by Henry Brandon. This young guy comes to town as cool as can be, wearing a trench coat, you know, dressed in black, as it were, and proceeds to try to force some kind of confrontation confrontation with George O'Brien. By the end of the scene, this young gunslinger instead gains nothing but respect for George O'Brien, who, by the way, in this movie, just comes in every scene swinging. It's awesome. Um, and this young gunslinger ends up then helping George O'Brien go after the bad guys. And let me tell you, this this young gunslinger played by Henry Brandon, he looks as if he walked out of a modern movie into this 1939 movie. His his look, his walk, his mannerism, his attitude is is from such a modern film. The tough guyness of it. The coolness of it. It's like you walk out of a Tarantino movie into this old beat western. It was just remarkable. And then at the towards the end when he and the young gunman are Walking down the street, slow, while there's smoke everywhere. They're going off to fight the final battle. It's the coolest thing. 
and I, <laughs> I just was not expecting such coolness and quality that I got from this movie. It really blew me away. I'm really excited to watch more George O'Brien films, if they're anything like this, if his character's anything like this, if they play out anything like this. I'm in for a good time. The Marshal of Mesa City, 1939. Um, if you want to try a B-Western, um, <laughs> definitely a great place to start um, to maybe get, get your mind in the right frame to watch these if you're not familiar with them. Definitely good for that. Um, but, you know, this one, uh, to me, was of such quality that um, hopefully... Any any B westerns after this won't be a letdown for you, but yeah, really enjoyed that one. Most surprising watch of the year, highly recommend it. And there we are, my favorite ten films, first time watches of 2023, all now on my list of favorite movies of all time. Check them out if you dare. <laughs> This time around on the bookshelf, I have some more new pickups. The first one was a uh, Christmas present. And it is Death on the Cheap, the lost film, lost B-movies of film noir by Arthur Lyons. And uh, this was, it looks to be first published in 2000. Um, but it is a look at B-movies that are film noir movies that are not usually films that are talked about. You may not find these films in uh, your other directories, as it were, of film noir. Although, in looking through all the titles that it does spotlight in the second half of the book, which I like, you know, the um, film-by-film descriptions, uh, a lot of these have, since 2000, uh, come out on physical media. Um... So it's really nice that a lot of these I will be able to actually watch if I so desire after reading about them. Uh, the first half of the book is um, him talking about uh, how B-movies, how, how film noir kind of grew out of B-movies, the crime films and so on. And uh, uh, describing how that process worked and and how it led up to having a lot of great B-movie film noir films that are worth checking out. Um, but yeah, started reading it <laughs> because I don't have enough uh, other books that I'm also reading at the same time <laughs> uh, about movies. But yeah, Death on the Cheap, that was a great uh, Christmas present. Um, so highly recommended for fans of film noir. Then a couple more books to feed my B-Western addiction. I, in 2024, I'm planning to watch all 66 Hopalong Cassidy films. I've never seen any of them. Um, I've been listening to the Hopalong Cassidy radio show while I drive around to work and wherever. Um, I got like four different um, sets of the radio show. Uh, so I'm kind of getting primed. Um... And I got this, Hopalong Cassidy on the page, on the screen. This book uh, by Francis Nevins goes in depth for about eh, 100 pages or so about the history of Hopalong Cassidy, uh, his origins in, in the novels and the short stories, and about the, you know the author and how all that came about. And gives you a rundown of um, the chronology of all those stories and books. And then it goes uh, movie by movie for all 66 uh, Hopalong Cassidy films. Um, this goes movie by movie. Tells you about each one. Gives some, some commentary on them. And that's what I was looking for. So that I can just work my way through this book. Watch all those movies. It also lists um, all of the TV episodes and uh, gives you a list of all of the radio shows 
So I, I, I bought the uh, DVD set of uh, the TV show. And I'm trying to buy as many of the radio show as I can. And so I can check those off as well. So this great all-in-one book if you're looking to get into Hopalong Cassidy. Yeah. And the last book. Uh, I'm looking, I've, I've been looking for these kind of complete filmography type books, if you couldn't tell. Um, for these B-West cowboys, so I can just work my way through them. And I found this complete filmography for Wild Bill Elliott by Gene Blotner. And film by film. So you can just follow along. It's a great tool for me to go through his films. Um, so very happy to find this. And the great cover, which is actually taken from a Dell comic book. So, anyway, yeah, the complete filmography of Wild Bill Elliott. Another rabbit hole. It seems that my um, <laughs> brain is nothing but rabbit holes. So, what do you do? Except watch movies and enjoy them. Uh, yeah, but uh, that'll do it for this episode of The Cinematic Attic. Uh, hope you all had a great holiday, and until next time... Enjoy your movies.